Welcome to ADA Talks, and I'm pleased and honored to welcome you here at ADA Campus and to introduce you our guest, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, His Excellency Ambassador Arazazimov. Welcome, Ambassador. Thank you. Uh, I'm pleased that uh, you have accepted our offer. And my first question would be, Araz Azimov as a Deputy Minister and Araz Azimov as a Professor at ADA, is there a difference? Because rumor has it there is. Well, uh, first of all, thank you for this offer. I think uh, this is an invitation which I could not reject anyway. Uh, difference between me as uh, a diplomat and uh, me as a lecturer invited by ADA, I don't, I don't see there any difference because uh, I'm, I'm trying in my lectures, I'm trying to give my own uh, knowledge and uh, my own experience uh, right from uh, the first hand students are, are able to get the views of someone who worked on the issues they are being taught by professional uh, professors and uh, lecturers of ADA based on textbooks. Textbooks uh, sometimes teach one thing. Life gives a different angle, a different aspect. So therefore I think this is a difference. Mr. Azimov, you have a rank of ambassador, but uh, through your years of diplomatic service you've never headed a foreign mission. Is there a personal reasons or that were just circumstances and would you like to head a foreign mission one day? No, I'm, I'm quite satisfied with what, what I am for today because I think that uh, I'm dealing with so many issues uh, which takes me uh, to different aspects of foreign policy and um, that uh, preoccupies me uh, a lot and uh, gives me different uh, interesting topics on my daily agenda uh, that uh, provides me a strong motivation. On the other hand, uh, yes, I, am, I, was been, I have been granted a uh, rank of ambassador since 1997 uh, by the decree of the President of the Republic of Azerbaijan. Mm, since 94, I am Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs and uh, my portfolio is quite large uh, to keep me busy and uh, uh, that is uh, for the time being something what I feel as uh, important uh, for me to be engaged in and on the other hand uh, you, you must be needed, uh, you need uh, to get a demand uh, and uh, as far as I'm needed here I will work at this position. Uh, then uh, the, uh, the decision on my uh, future assignment is not with me but with my authorities. I will just uh, go on. Ambassador, when we were planning this interview, we decided to conduct a survey among ADA students so that they would be able to send us the question of interest that they would want to ask you, mm -hmm. but they don't have an opportunity to do so. And one of the questions was, does Ambassador Ari Azimov consider his life a success story? Because you started as a journalist and now you ended up as a deputy minister. So do you consider your life a success story? Well, first of all, my life is not over, I think. Uh, I hope it will go for some time. Uh, second, I've never been a journalist. Uh, I, after I graduated the university while being a student, uh, but then after graduation, I worked in uh, the state broadcast company of Azerbaijan on radio side, but uh, not as a journalist, but uh, as an interpreter and as a speaker in a Persian uh, section of Azerbaijani foreign broadcast service. Uh, working in a program broadcasted by Azerbaijan for Iran. Uh, that was part of uh, my education of course and uh, that was part of my professional development. Since 1989 I has been invited into the Ministry of Foreign Affairs starting initially in information department and then gradually going further 
Mm. And since uh, we got independence in 91, I've been, in a way, on the, so to say, front line of uh, Azerbaijan's uh, engagement and uh, introduction in international organizations. And this is how I started in 91, going through different organizations like uh, Council of Europe, like OSCE, uh, CSE that time, like uh, NACSI, North Atlantic Cooperation Council, dealing with a variety of issues related to international security cooperation. And uh, that, uh, of course, is uh, uh, very uh, fortunate way of, uh, uh, of my professional development. Uh, that was uh, uh, a, a time when I got uh, many opportunities to learn and to, uh, at the same time, to work for, for the country. And this is the best uh, thing ever can anyone take. Mm, therefore, yes, I'm quite happy about what I have done so far, and uh, I'm looking to the future. Ambassador, one of another frequently asked questions is about your Afghanistan experience. And we would like to know how has it changed your views and opinions on world and politics, and has it changed anything in your perception towards life? My initial Afghani experience takes me to somewhat 30 years ago, uh, when I was 20 years old, and uh, as a student of uh, Orientalist studies of uh, Baku State University, uh, together with my classmates, uh, we have been taken on service to Afghanistan. That was in time of uh, Soviet operation in Afghanistan. And uh, I've spent some time there uh, in 1982-83. Mm, for someone, uh, that is, uh, first of all, life experience. Uh, it was not entertainment at all. Uh, it was not a touristic uh, voyage. It was. Uh, a hard work in uh, very difficult conditions, uh, but I'm quite uh, proud of uh, being one of those who returned back. I'm not proud of what has been done there. Uh, of course, uh, I would not uh, <coughs> certainly like that part of, uh, of, of the story, because uh, I think that Afghanistan has been put in trouble and still is in trouble. Mm, now I'm glad, uh, after 30 years, uh, I'm glad again to be engaged in activities related to Afghanistan, uh, already as representative of MFA of Azerbaijan, working bilaterally and multilaterally with Afghanistan, with our counterparts there, for improving, assisting, cooperating, contributing in many ways. Uh, Azerbaijan is uh, uh, one of the uh, closest partners of Afghanistan. We are friendly nations. Uh, we have very good relations with the government and with the people of Afghanistan. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that uh, I'm part of this uh, exercise. I'm, I'm glad that uh, I'm contributing now to positive development of that country. And uh, uh, I'm glad that Azerbaijan is uh, one of those who is considered by Afghanistan as uh, a friendly brother nation. Ambassador, through your lifetime you had been able to work closely with the national leader and former president of Azerbaijan, Heydar Aliyev, and you frequently share your experiences in class. Can you say something about how was it like to work with him, and have you gained any experience, uh, have you gained any knowledge, and can maybe you can share something? That was, uh, first of all, a huge experience. Because uh, uh, Hidar Aliyev uh, is uh, a monumental personality, uh, a historical personality. Uh, he he uh, was a leader and uh, coming uh, to leadership in a challenging time and through many challenges. And uh, his wisdom uh, was taking him to uh, to meet these challenges effectively. At the same time, I think, I think that uh, uh, life was short, and uh, of course, uh, he could do further more things. 
Every contact with him uh, would, of course, impress uh, you. Every contact would uh, give you a lot of experiences. Uh, every uh, task he would give to you would be thoroughly thought through, would be measured and would be qualified. And that is, of course, a huge responsibility to work under leadership of such a person. Uh, that would be a huge sense of, uh, of, uh, of a responsibility to be in line with the expectations he would have to you. To be uh, rather fitting, to be uh, relevant and to be effective in implementing his tasks, to meet his expectations. That is of course a responsibility, that is uh, a burden but that is a good burden, that is a good part of, uh, of life of any uh, professional uh, who have worked with, with him. Ambassador, if you could sum up the foreign policy priorities of Azerbaijan nowadays, what would they be? Well, uh, foreign, priority, foreign policy priorities of a country, uh, first of all, must be drawn from the set of interests, of course. And foreign policy is an mm, extension of domestic policy. Foreign policy is aimed at uh, uh, serving the uh, nation and uh, providing uh, the foreign contribution into development of, of a nation. Foreign policy always uh, must be in, in line with the uh, interests, with the concerns, uh, foreign policy must be uh, an effective instrument in addressing challenges <coughs> and foreign policy must be always uh, tailored uh, to the capacities. Uh, once you don't have a resource, a capacity, therefore uh, in, in such a case your foreign policy would be rather limited. You can be effective when you have a resource. Uh, you can be active uh, but if your state is weak, uh, if, uh, if your foreign policy is uh, limited, then uh, there is not much you can achieve. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you cannot be nationally limited, especially in nowadays uh, quiet intertwined world community. No one can stay in isolation <coughs> and therefore uh, connections between nations, connections between peoples of different regions, transregional connections, all this create certain background for foreign policy. Uh, coming to Azerbaijan, uh, Azerbaijan is, is a country um, located in a very important part of the world. Uh, historically important and nowadays are strategically uh, getting more and more angles and more and more dimensions, political dimensions, economic dimensions, strategic dimensions. Uh, your location takes you to many new opportunities. Your human resource is rich. Your uh, natural resources provide you certainly strong support uh, in taking your interests further. Your state stability, your uh, development as a state, you, you, the statehood uh, progress in Azerbaijan, all these are factors which uh, put foreign policy of Azerbaijan today at a new level. So if we uh, would go back to early 90s, uh, with many challenges at that time, with limited resources. Uh, still, we were trying to put Azerbaijan on the international agenda. We are trying to flag Azerbaijan on the international map. We are trying to realize the potential of Azerbaijan's strategic location. Creating, first of all, and uh, developing and motivating the interest of international community towards Azerbaijan. Then, uh, having engaged engagement of international community, providing proper balance of interests inside the country and uh, providing smooth uh, balance of presences. Uh, 
uh, foreign policy uh, of Azerbaijan was challenged uh, by many uh, actually things, but uh, of course regional security, conflicts, uh, different kind of humanitarian uh, difficulties which Azerbaijan had as a result of the uh, aggression and occupation of territories, all this have come to, to the agenda of foreign policy. Uh, through years and through decades. Uh, today, Azerbaijan is uh, uh, taking further new horizons and going over and uh, getting into new dimensions. We no more in a position of attracting interest. We are no more in a position of uh, getting assistance. We are no more a recipient. We are a contributor. We are a contributor in international security. We are a contributor in international inter-civilizational dialogue. We are a contributor in energy security, in fighting terrorism, in different ways. Azerbaijan today is, has stepped far beyond the stereotype cliche which has been um, put online in early 90s somewhat by circumstances, <coughs> somewhat by, by those outside players like uh, a predominantly Muslim country, oil-rich one and conflict-torn. So the uh, stereotype cliché of Azerbaijan like uh, religiously dominated, uh, non-moderate, uh, conflict-torn, oil-rich, but their ugly country is gone. It's gone uh, not to the less extent due to the foreign policy activities. It's gone because of Azerbaijan has opened up, has uh, passed through difficulties as has, and has uh, hampered a uh, new image of Azerbaijan, hammered out a new image of a country which is uh, intellectual one, with a, which is uh, multi-confessional, tolerant, stable, predictable, economically developed, progressing, uh, and uh, internationally contributing. So uh, uh, in this, in such circumstance, of course, foreign policy uh, has many uh, new tasks and many uh, new uh, items on the agenda. Uh, but the basic priority is uh, um, serving the national interests of Azerbaijan along these lines. Along the lines of contributing to further strengthening of the country, strengthening of nation, developing of human resource uh, by virtue of foreign education, by virtue of international cooperation, by virtue of humanitarian contacts, developing different formats within which Azerbaijan uh, uh, becomes able to contribute due to its capacities and due to its uh, um, competences and uh, resources. Azerbaijan has very rare assets, uh, making and putting that on a very unique shelf. Again, multi-confessionality, tolerance, ability to work in a different, uh, different com um, communities and with with different communities, bringing them across in Azerbaijan and uh, giving an impetus to many uh, different ways of international humanitarian cooperation. On the other hand, the uh, development of energy uh, capacity of Azerbaijan puts it at a very high shelf of, uh, of a demand and uh, international attention. Uh, it is not easy at all, uh, it is rather challenging, uh, but at the same time it is very rewarding. Uh, issues like uh, security concerns of Azerbaijan, uh, both in terms of national security and uh, regional security, are also among the priorities of foreign policy of Azerbaijan. And of course, settlement of the conflict uh, with Armenia, uh, uh, issues of uh, security arrangements for Azerbaijan. You know that Azerbaijan is not a member of any international security arrangement. Uh, we participate in European security processes. Uh, we are members of OSCE. We are Council of Europe members. We are partners with NATO and with European Union. 
But at the same time, we cannot be one-sided uh, due to our location, due to our uh, human resource, due to our ethnic composition, multi-confessionality, historical background, future strategic development, trans-regional connections. We cannot be uh, one-sided. We belong to two civilizations, we belong to two continents, and uh, along with and in parallel with our memberships and partnerships in European domain, we have very strong Asian angle. We are Asian country, we are rooted in Asia, uh, we have history shared with Asian nations, and therefore we actively participate in many international, regional, uh, intergovernmental, uh, economic, uh, humanitarian organizations, being members of OIC, non-aligned movement, uh, economic cooperation organization, Asian institutions like uh, the uh, SICA, the Conference on Interaction and Confidence in Asia, and many, many others. We have uh, these uh, dimensions uh, providing Azerbaijan a 360 degree position. Uh, we are in integrating in many ways in different parts and uh, globally Azerbaijan is positioning the itself as, uh, as a global country, as a country which is part of the whole world community and uh, therefore uh, this is a unique aspect of Azerbaijan's foreign policy. Considering the settlement of Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, Albert Einstein believed that you can't get a different result doing the same thing over and over again. Azerbaijan has been in peace negotiations for over the past two decades and with no result. Do you think it's time to change something and will we get a different result if we do? Uh, anything to change, uh, first of all, it seems to me that we have to look into reasons of such uh, a long negotiation exercise. Uh, why we are uh, not yet uh, beyond uh, the, uh, the, uh, the edge of negotiations, why we are still inside this process, which is rather rather difficult one, uh, not stable one, shaky one, uh, submitted to different rivalries, to different political rivalries and competitions, sometimes of geopolitical nature, sometimes strategically motivated, sometimes uh, driven by uh, rivalries in the region and outside the region. Uh, therefore, we have to admit uh, all these circumstances and all these factors. Uh, the problem is not uh, an easy one, and the problem is not uh, simply an ethnic or inter-ethnic clash between Armenians and Azerbaijanis. Uh, territories are occupied, therefore they must be withdrawn. Uh, people are expelled, they have to return back. Economics devastated, they must be rehabilitated. So these are major elements of the process. Political solutions uh, to those uh, issues, st outstanding issues uh, in the agenda of negotiations would be uh, tackled once and when major obstacles are withdrawn. This was always the philosophy and the approach uh, of both mediators and uh, Azerbaijan. Uh, political twisting practices of course are not welcome. And I think that uh, if something to be changed, exactly this, the uh, practice of twisting the process, the practice of abusing, the practice of uh, using occupation as a factor in negotiations, the practice of uh, enforcing or compelling Azerbaijan by the use of uh, acquisition of territories by force, these all are illegal uh, practices and uh, therefore uh, they must be rejected and uh, denied uh, by a decisive uh, determination and will of international community. And the international community is quite 
obviously uh, explicit in this uh, issue. Uh, position explicitly has been stressed and uh, expressed many times by many organizations, uh, starting from Universal, which is United Nations, up to regionals uh, like uh, uh, NATO or uh, OIC or OSCE or Council of Europe. Uh, even economic organizations uh, have not been uh, staying aside and uh, have expressed their position on that. Non-aligned movement recently, uh, an institution which comprises 120 countries, expressed its firm position um, along with NATO um, on, or, or OIC, stressing that uh, the uh, conflict must be solved on the basis of territorial integrity and sovereignty of Azerbaijan. So, uh, when uh, Armenian opponents uh, would uh, see in a resolution taken by Islamic cooperation organization kind of uh, solidarity with Azerbaijan expressed by Islamic states. Uh, what then they will say to a position, similar position expressed by NATO uh, as an alliance uh, contributing to your Atlantic security? Or what would they say to the statement, uh, decision of non-aligned movement? So it is not only about solidarity of Islamic community with Azerbaijan. It is a solidarity of the whole international community with Azerbaijan and with the principles of international law. Azerbaijan is uh, not uh, demanding anything more than international law says. Territorial integrity must be respected. Borders are to be respected. They are inviolable. And uh, any uh, acquisition of uh, territory by use of force is unacceptable. Uh, that is the sense uh, of, of the position of international community, strongly expressed and confirmed many times. So it seems to me that uh, the uh, opposite side the Armenian side must uh, to realize that and to reassess the position. Uh, things would move easier once such a reassessment takes place. Thank you for your broad answer. My last question would be, what would you advise or maybe you could give some tips uh, for the future academy graduates that would want to work as civil servants in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and what you personally look for in your employers? Well, oh, a diplomat uh, must be a full-fledged weapon, prepared for everything. A diplomat uh, must be dedicated. Devotion is the most important thing, along with professional level and preparedness to meet uh, any challenge and to work in any circumstances. Uh, circumstances sometimes are pressing. Uh, diplomacy is uh, uh, a very challenging profession. Uh, family business or private life uh, can be sometimes uh, severely damaged and compromised uh, while a diplomat is challenged by, by a task. Uh, preparedness for uh, to work in international community, uh, ability to defend your position ability to explain, to go into people, to talk to, to intercommunicate, to negotiate. Negotiating, you must know your deadline, your bottom line. You must know and qualify your national interests and you must promote them. Uh, compromises, mm, compromises actually natural extension of, di of diplomacy. But compromising uh, and taking a decision, you can never compromise your national interests. So proper qualification of national interests, knowledge of your own country, of your own history, uh, respect to what your nation represents, desire to help to your nation, desire uh, to further contribute and to serve. 
and uh, what is even no less important but more important, uh, preparedness to do so. Professionally you must be educated and you must be uh, ready to contribute. This is what uh, I usually expect from my employees. At the same time, um, we work in international formats and uh, working in different international organizations, uh, sometimes working under time pressure, uh, you have uh, maybe minutes, uh, not hours, but minutes before a session starts and uh, you have to take a decision on what you're going to do at that session. You are given a new draft of a proposal of a country on a topic which even you would not even consider before that. In that very few minutes you have to study, to analyze and to find out, to figure out what your interest might be there. And what your interest is then dictates to you what you're going to do. You're going to pass it, you're going to deny it, you're going to challenge it, you're going to improve it. To improve you must know and you must be prepared that uh, decision is not taken, taken by your own, on your own. It is a decision of international format. Uh, 194 countries sitting there or 58 countries sitting there and you must go to each one. You must uh, know interests of each one. You must uh, find a proper balance uh, in between your interests and uh, interests of others and you must uh, immediately identify the capacity in, in this draft. What can you do with that and how can you do? And then you have to do it. And this happens always under time pressure. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there are uh, strategic dimensions. Tactically things might change every day, but strategies are not changed. Therefore, uh, my employee would know a doctrinal basis of, of the strategy of, uh, of the country. He would know the legislation of, of his own country. He must know the uh, development of the strategy and he must uh, figure out, uh, again under time pressure, in what way his step might be smaller, might be tactical one, not visionable one, how that can interplay with the strategy of the country. Ambassador, may I thank you again for being here with us today and giving us an opportunity to have an interview with you. Our guest today was the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Excellency Ambassador Arazajimov. Thank you.